Namaskara, Vanakam, Namaste to all the Piguru audience. It's always a delight to interact with Piguru audience. I sincerely thank uh, Shri Ayer for providing this opportunity. Today we will uh, deal with uh, the recently concluded election, which I think has been uh, uh, chewed or uh, uh, without digestion, perhaps significant number of uh, channels and experts and uh, so we are going to add to that uh, thing a little first and foremost of course is the major uh, event in terms of delhi uh, the the you know uh, mcd i really don't understand how this uh, you know basically it's a garbage clearing and toilet cleaning and uh, that type of activity center it was three divisions and it was all merged and but that became such a major you know as if it's a national uh, importance and most of the uh, cities have their own mcds and the elections are held there. see for instance in bangalore it's not held from 20 or something pending and uh, it's nothing but somehow so much was made and uh, cabinet ministers visiting other chief ministers going and uh, i i didn't understand it was i think uh, significantly hyped than what is required and in the process the victory of uh, this uh, app has become a very major uh, talking point because it was hyped and the one thing that election tells i have always been maintaining corruption is not a major issue in india as of now it's a major issue but not from the point of view of the public perception in terms of punishing the leaders this uh, sisodia uh, that uh, you know liquor gate and the jain uh, taking uh, videos and uh, treating the prison as a, a resort you know some people can want to convert resort into prisons like recently you know this uh, amat patel he is no more unfortunately his uh, rajya sabha election all the mlas were uh, transported to bangalore and uh, kept in uh, uh, what you may call the five star hotel Similarly, during the DM, ADMK internal tussle, this uh, Shashikala took all the MLAs to a resort. So some people convert resort into prisons. Like our friend uh, uh, recently in Maharashtra in this uh, uh, Shinde and uh, uh, other party, they were all uh, airlifted to Assam and kept in a resort, kept in a hotel. And <clears throat> so you convert uh, uh, resort into uh, prisons. And people like Jane convert to prison into resort. That's a you know major uh, distinction. Even earlier there was a report about uh, Bangalore prison uh, being converted as a resort by this uh, Sasikala, who was the very close uh, with uh, Jayalalitha. Anyhow, all that uh, you know the uh, mud which was thrown, some of it might be true, some of it not true. It didn't seem to have any significant impact in terms of. So corruption per se is not a major issue, but if you are corrupt and if you are arrogant, then it becomes a major issue. Two examples are in terms of Tamil Nadu itself. The Jalalta was at uh, you know long time before 2096 to 2001 she lost power because of the you know not just because of the corruption but because of the arrogance associated with the corruption. You know she was supposed to be having some. Uh, 200 uh, slippers and uh, 300 type of shawls and uh, had a marriage of her one of her uh, nephews and which was a very uh, obscenely you know elaborate uh, function on the procession and other thing anyhow corruption per se is, if you are silent and if you are corrupt i don't think it makes much uh, problem for the public second is you can't be corrupt and unpatriotic people don't uh, you know appreciate it if you are patriotic in the sense you can't sell the country or you can't divulge secrets to outsiders and you can't be perceived as uh, acting inimical to the country's interest this is the second important point in corruption and that uh, point also people are not very appreciative of your actions otherwise corruption per se you cannot uh, you know you can go on accusing like that yeah raja after so much accusation he got elected from nilagiris as an mp and i am told he is in the panel for uh, uh, to sit in the uh, speaker chair whenever there is a requirement another i thought he can be put in charge of the ethics uh, uh, panel also anyhow 
So that is where it stands, uh, this, uh, what one can call this uh, MCD or whatever that. And uh, whether one likes it or not, BJP doesn't have a good leadership in Delhi. And uh, Congress had one long time before Sheila Dixit and after her thing, Congress, and uh, Congress actually got decimated. The very sad part of the whole story is Congress is gloating over the decline of uh, BJP or rather reduction in the seats for BJP. It is not looking at the mirror that uh, the, that party itself is getting. Uh, it's standing in between ICU and Mercury. It's a very, very severe type of uh, situation. And uh, same thing in Gujarat also. We will come to that. So this MCD election were, according to me, overhyped. <clears throat> and accordingly, it has got its own uh, uh, thing. And uh, results were not unexpected. 15 years, uh, these people have been ruling. And there is not much of a you know, major uh, changes or anything in Delhi <clears throat> in terms of, you know, basically one group is in Delhi is, uh, you know, the top rich. And whose children always ask the traffic constable, Aap janta hai, mere pop kon hai, and who is my father and other thing. And uh, whenever they are stopped for some uh, drunken driving or uh, crossing the signal, once I was in a car, I this boy asked the cop, you know, who is my father. I told, why do you ask the cop, go and ask your mom. That is a much better way to deal with the situation. Anyhow, that's a sort of a, what one can loosely call the <coughs> neorish or, you know, very extravagantly rich uh, type of people and uh, you know periodically you see some lady is bashing up some of the <laughs> sugi or zomato delivery boys and all this comes or parking lot attendant and other the other group is uh, <clears throat> the the first group is uh, what you may loosely call the uh, elites who don't care other is of course the you know poverty stricken type of a fellows uh, uh, mainly, maybe from Bangladesh, maybe from other countries, occupying all the slums and other things. So that is the type of uh, uh, division in Delhi, and it is a masochistic city. You know, they all, for instance, every year they shout about this pollution. They all know the cause for the pollution, but uh, they identify, you know, something stupid, wrong thing like Diwali and other thing, and try to ban crackers and. It's a, you know, it's a, you know, unbelievably insane city, anyhow. So, let's leave it at that. So, this uh, is, may not be such a major thing from the point of view of the, <clears throat> if you recall the last parliament election, Delhi, there is a sweep by the um, BJP. So, people understand the difference between, uh, you know, the garbage clearing and uh, the assembly. According to me, Delhi doesn't require both, actually. It can be combined, both the assembly and the uh, garbage uh, clearance. Anyhow, the other is uh, major impact is Gujarat. Unbelievable, actually. Quite a large number of uh, uh, exit polls and uh, opinion polls gave good uh, number, but nobody gave a number like above 150 and other things. You know, 182. This is the highest, much more than 2002 or any of these things. Record, actually. So that way, UJP has uh, swept. You can use the word. It was uh, more like a tornado or uh, more like a wave. And it is definitely exclusively due to Modi. Let's be very clear about it. And uh, the <clears throat> there has been a decline in the urban areas actually. They have done extremely well in the Adivasi areas and uh, whether rural areas. But there has been a, some amount of the decline would have arrested because of the effort taken by Modi. He visited, I don't know, any number of times Gujarat in order to pep up and uh, so it's a victory for him that is also from one point of view cause for uh, thinking because it is required to develop local leaders I hope that the current chief minister is built as a major leader in the next five years in order to meet the uh, challenges and other things otherwise you know ruling it gives an impression that uh, Modi is both the chief minister and the prime minister which is not uh, uh, necessarily good because once he leaves the prime minister chair sometime or other and uh, then uh, there will be a big uh, amount of question mark and vacuum and other thing so this is something which i think they should be uh, thinking about it and uh, hp you know uh, unbelievable 
some people say large number of government servants are there and this promise of old pension i only hope it was a political uh, type of electoral gimmick they are not going to actually implement already chatisgarh and rajasthan has announced and punjab also expected it could be suicidal for the respective states the salary wages pension and interest will be much more than the revenue of the states they won't have any amount of money available for any other activity already most of the state government don't perform any other activity every day morning the chief ministers get up go and open some saloon or go and open some uh, jewelry shop or cut ribbon or and hug some film stars or something like that they do it's a totally redundant thing if you ask me all these states can be <laughs> abolished and some 50 uh, cantons or 50 uh, councils can be created in india based on river water and various in order to solve all these other problems also this linguistic uh, division which was done for primarily because of andhra pradesh pressure uh, fasting by the andhra pradesh leader putti sri ramulu and other thing but the same andhra pradesh got split into two portion so the language per se is not necessarily a major unifying factor so also religion that has been shown by pakistan and bangladesh anyhow so this is a hp hopefully do not uh, go back to the old pension scheme let it be a you know sort of an electoral thing like in tamil nadu they give lot of promises none of them is fulfilled same way it can be uh, kept as one of the electoral promises only and not to be realized the gujarat victory also uh, tells us something much more actually it tells us the possibility of a good uh, uh, results in 2024 many of uh, the leaders may not know gujarat was 100% sweep in the last parliamentary election and uh, similarly karnataka was also it was not 100% sweep if i recall some 3 or 4 were lost 25 was gained out of 28 and gujarat was 26 out of 26 so the performance in madhya pradesh uh, rajasthan chatisgarh was all excellent but uh, if it has to <clears throat> if it loses even some 10 15 seats in those places it has to gain bjp has to gain it and that has to be in the south so that way only south is a very very major and important uh, uh, factor for uh, bjp in the 2024 election because uh, bengal you know some improvement may be there may not be significant and one doesn't know the results about maharashtra where earlier it was in alliance and now that uh, old alliance with shiv sena is gone it's only with a split portion of shiv sena but in the bipoles one interesting thing of course is uh, as expected anyhow in uh, the wife of uh, uh, daughter in law of mulayam singh uh, won the seat from mainpuri or what you may loosely call their pocket borough but uh, very important is even though the family uh, baro they won there is another place uh, rampur which is uh, traditionally the place for this assam khan they were not uh, successful of course there is a lot of accusation that they were not allowed to vote and uh, this is very common uh, you know whenever you lose you say that uh, uh, electoral machine has not worked or uh, complaints are there and other thing but still he lost is a very very uh, major uh, master stroke the other one rld one which was also expected so the caste grip is uh, significantly there in up uh, yadavs and uh, to some extent some portion of the muslim also collaborating that my alliance as they call it so akhilesh is also trying to uh, what capitalize on it let's wait and see how much he is able to impact in the parliamentary election but bihar presents a very interesting thing the maha gadbandan lost the election actually bjp won the constituency that itself is an interesting news actually and uh, bihar has always posed a very major challenge to bjp in terms of its uh, tally it has got alliances with the different different groups and other thing now let's wait and see because bihar has to compensate or has to provide a huge number of mps in order to compensate for any losses which are going to take place in Uh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, and other places. 
and south is also a very major and important thing in case uh, gujarat uh, continues in the same fashion because uh, even the state assembly election has been treated more like uh, modi's election so i am sure in 2024 modi will be able to capture the imagination of gujarati asmita and other thing and that would also be uh, yes the last uh, parliament election another the third uh, three terms will be over and i do not expect him to uh, go for a fourth term or anything if i am asked i am never asked this thing i would prefer two terms only not more than that and uh, it is appropriate that somebody else is uh, contesting but if i tell this there will be a huge amount of howls and protest and other thing so let it go through but uh, let after that just like the party chief it's only two terms amit shah was there for two terms and later on it was handed over to nadda and uh, similarly uh, i think uh, chief minister as well as uh, uh, prime minister should be for two terms and that should also help in developing what you may loosely call the local level leaders see modi and amit shah are like banyan tree you know they are it's not easy for anything to grow under the banyan tree and far away from the bandy tree in assam he is doing extremely well sharma ji and uh, in the south uh, annamale is doing very well so two terms would be my uh, suggestion or my recommendation or something and also i am not very fond of this uh, selecting the cm from delhi this uh, congress has always used that as a mechanism it's a ruse or something like that of course they do consult the local mlas and then but i would prefer a you know straight forward uh, voting system and it is always suggested if you have that then uh, caste and other factors will play a role as if you know if the center selects uh, they do not play a role or what and if you create a dummy and then try to impose him then sooner or later dissidents come karnataka is a classic example whenever congress came to power there were dissidents from day one actually so i would prefer the local uh, mlas or whoever is selected to select the leader ideally actually before the election itself to project him as the leader who is going to sit on the chair anyhow so the parliament election if the gujarat results are going to be uh, replicated it will be tremendously advantageous but one note of caution there is a huge amount of global uh you know resentment against modi even india's rise to power is not appreciated by many countries they feel that this is a unnecessary intrusion in the global power structure when you have russia when you have china and other countries which we have to deal with and uh, these fellows are and uh, many a time india takes independent decision also it's not towing the line of us or uk or anything and so for our fault lines will be exploited recently for instant uh, uh, i think 2 3 days before this uh, dalit network in uh, denmark based uh, and they have uh, got accredited to the un body in order to uh, put pressure on india i'm very surprised actually india should uh, recall our ambassador from uh, this uh, denmark and uh, uh, countries and how can they interfere blatantly in india's internal affair dalit or whatever that is our concern our worries it need not necessarily go to an international forum we don't have a sd network or we don't have a roma network in order to respond so the pressure on india in order to exploit the fault lines will be phenomenally increasing and the funds also will be increasingly coming this uh, network is supposed to be funded by danish church and the uh, swiss search so the charges are flushed with fund they become extremely active they want to have a veto power like our you know the port project in kerala the church says that uh, they would not allow it earlier kudangolam in tamil nadu church was the one which was sterilized so now they want to have a veto power and this will increase let me tell it with a significant amount of foresight and confidence and uh, so 2024 is not going to be a easy battle for uh, bjp it's going to be a very very uh, difficult it's going to have a significant amount of external pressure on india as well as uh, our growth let's wait and see how these uh, you know 
different permutation combination of political alliances and what is the role uh, uh, Kejriwal is going to play as an opposition. Kindly note now AAP is a national party and uh, because more four states they are present they have become national party. Delhi, Punjab, Goa and Gujarat. Gujarat they have few MLAs but still they are a national party. Well as the CPI is struggling hard to retain its national party position and uh, because of the decline in terms of the support from different type of states and other thing. So we have BJP, uh, we have Congress and we have AAP and uh, CPM. These three are now four are the national parties. So this is something which is uh, to be kept in the back of the mind. Let's wait and see how the things shape up for 24. Thank you very much. Thanks for the patience listening. Thank you.